Her daughter was an amazing young woman, first in her class, uh, just amazing in every way. So uh, I just want to say thank you to the whole Root family, incredible family. All right. So we are going to take on special interests, a lobbyist, and the corrupt corporate media that have rigged the system against every single American. I've been reading stories over the last couple of days that are so inaccurate and so dishonest. I have never seen anything like it in my life. And I'm willing to take it on because, and I didn't need it, believe me, I didn't need it. I have a great company. I built this great company. And somebody said, you know, he could be at a point where he's enjoying the fruits of his labor. And here I am working harder than ever before. I'm like a lot of people in the different rooms in the different stadiums where it's true. Where, where 18 years ago, their wages and real wages were higher than they are today. They had one job. Now they have two jobs. They're working much harder, much harder, and they're making much less money. And that's what's happened in our country. And the only thing I can say is I'm also working harder, okay? So we're working harder together. We're working a lot harder together. And I'm spending a lot of money on my campaign. I'm spending tremendous tens and tens and tens of millions of dollars. And uh, I like it because you know what? We're not going to be controlled. We're not going to be controlled. So important. We're not going to be controlled. We're going to we're going to take our country back and it's going to be a beautiful thing. This is a movement. We have a movement going on like I think they've never seen before. And everybody's talking about it. The big thing is on November 8th, we have to get out there, folks. Otherwise, this movement will be wonderful to read about someday. But you know what? It won't mean a damn thing, okay? Won't mean, to me, won't mean a damn thing. We're going to create new government that serves you, your family, and your country. Lower taxes by a lot. Less regulation. More affordable child care fair trade deals, secure borders, thriving family farms, millions and millions of new jobs. We're going to end the Clinton corruption, total corruption. Horrible. Horrible. What's going on in this country is horrible. And restore dignity and honesty to government service. Hillary Clinton is an insider fighting for her donors and her insiders, mostly fighting for herself. I am an outsider fighting for you. We're fighting together. Fighting together. Everything you need to know about Hillary Clinton can be understood with this simple phrase, follow the money. And believe me, that's what's happened. In her campaign for president, Hillary Clinton has received $100 million in contributions from Wall Street and the hedge funds. She received $4.1 million in speaking fees from financial firms. I'd like to see what she said. Where are the papers burning? Bernie was asking for the papers, but Bernie gave up. The same groups paying Bill and Hillary for their speeches were lobbying the federal government. Twenty-two groups paying Bill Clinton for speeches lobbied the State Department while Hillary was Secretary of State. And don't forget that Clinton contributors were appointed to advisory boards by the Secretary Clinton or all the favors and access was granted. And guess what? They wrote checks. The favors were granted. And all of these people, or at least a lot of them, wrote checks. She even gave up 20% of uranium. You know what happens with uranium, don't you? And who controls that 20%? Russia. 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 She disgraced the office of Secretary of State by putting it up for sale. 
And if she ever got the chance, she would put the Oval Office up for sale, too. And nobody has any doubt about it. And we can't let that happen. That's why you have to go out and vote on November 8th. And early voting in Iowa starts tomorrow. Get out. Don't take a chance. Don't take a chance. Do not take a chance. She deleted and bleached 33,000 emails. Nobody ever heard of the bleaching. Nobody ever heard of it. And they don't use it. It's a very expensive process. People don't use it. But she used it. And nobody understands how she can get a congressional subpoena. She gets the subpoena. This didn't happen before the subpoena. She gets the subpoena, and she then goes out, and she deletes 33,000 emails. You know, if somebody sues you, and they want your records, and you do that, as a private citizen, it's you know where you go. She gets a congressional subpoena, and I'm so disappointed with the people in Washington for allowing her to get away with this. I'm so disappointed. And that means on both sides, by the way. I am so disappointed when they say there's nothing they can do. There's nothing they can do. She gets rid of 13 phones. How many people have gotten rid of 13 phones? And how many people? You got one hand. What business are you in? What's your business? I think he was just a wise guy, that's all. But she destroyed a number of them with a hammer. How many people have destroyed an iPhone or a phone with a hammer? Anybody in the room? A uh, couple of hands go up. I don't know if they're kidding. I think they're kidding, but who knows? Her staffers taking the Fifth Amendment. How about that? And her ringleaders getting immunity is. Now, she has people taking the Fifth Amendment. Four people plus the guy who illegally did the server. You know, he put it in the illegal server. So there are five people taking the Fifth Amendment, like you see on the mob, right? You see the mob takes the Fifth if you're innocent, why are you taking the Fifth Amendment? And then they read a whole list of charges. She's guilty on every one of them. And then what do they say? But that's okay. And yet other people that have done 2% of what she did, their lives have been destroyed. You tell me. You tell me what's going on with our country, what's going on with our government. Foreign enemies with easy access to hacker server, lies to Congress under oath about turning over her work-related emails, which are largely destroyed, although I have a feeling they can get emails. You know, I've always heard you really can't destroy emails. I don't think they tried too hard to get them, do you? Does anybody think? I don't think they tried too hard. The Clintons have perfected the politics of profit. But more importantly, when you look at what's happening, I think it has more to do with other things. Large corporations who support terrible trade deals and offshore jobs, and they're donating to the Clintons. When you look at some of the deals that we all have to suffer with, and you look at the deals that are made, a lot of those deals, it's not because the politicians are so stupid. Now, in some cases, they are. Seriously. But not all. Probably in most, they aren't. A friend of mine said to me, how is it possible that such and such a deal was made? And then you look at who's making contributions to the campaign, and you see why the deal is made. Okay? It's very sad when you look at it. And what does it mean? It means our jobs are fleeing our country. Our companies that employ the people are leaving from Mexico and other places. China can devalue their currency and do whatever they want. The Wall Street investors who have rigged the regulations against the middle class, they're donating to Hillary Clinton. They're certainly not donating to me. The wealthy donors who want to shut down American energy, they're donating to Hillary Clinton. And by the way, ethanol, we like ethanol, right? We like ethanol.
The special interests who want open borders are donating to Hillary Clinton. And you have your problems here with open borders. And I've been hearing a lot about open borders, even here. You don't think of this part of the world for open borders. You have your problems. A lot of people are telling me. That's why Hillary Clinton is pushing. Oh, we'll build the wall. We will build that wall. Believe me, we're going to build the wall. We're going to build the wall. And Mexico is going to pay for the wall. Believe me, 100 percent. Mexico is doing very well, thanks to the United States. Mexico is very happy with the United States. Mexico's leaders are so much smarter than our leaders. So Hillary Clinton's pushing for a 550 percent increase in Syrian refugees coming into our country. It's, it's actually unbelievable. I have to be You know, I sit up here and I stand up here and I do all of these speeches and discussions and I read all I read and I see all I see. And you hear a thing like that, 550 percent increase. In fact, I used to say 500 percent and the press said, Trump is wrong. So I figured, wow, I figured it's three, four, five hundred percent lower. They said he was wrong. It's actually a 550 percent increase. In other words, she's allowing more. They even correct you on the upside. That's the first time that ever happened. <laughs> she and her financial backers will say anything to do anything. They lie about anything to keep their grip and power, to keep their control over the country. The American people have had it with corrupt Clinton ways. They've had it. They've had it. They're tired of the lies. They're tired of trivial politics. They're tired of being talked down to, looked down upon, and treated like second-class citizens. Smart people not being treated right. How many more Clinton scandals can this country take? One after another after another. You know the story, folks. You've seen it for years and years. And we can't take another four years of Barack Obama. And we can't take another four years of Crooked Hillary Clinton. You can't do it. They're the sordid past. We're going to have a bright future. We're going to make America great again. We're going to make America greater than ever before. We can do that. But if we don't win this election, it'll never, ever happen. I tell you what, we're never going to have another shot. This is it. The tables will be turned, and it'll be too late. While our campaign outlines big changes and bold solutions to make your life better, the Clinton campaign focuses only on small and petty distractions. Never in American history have so many serious challenges been met with so unserious a campaign as the campaign of Hillary Clinton. And I'll tell you what, you know, we had the debate the other night. And every single online poll had we winning by sometimes a landslide. And then you go on television, and these are Time magazine. Drudge, phenomenal man. Drudge, uh, big, big groups. I mean, other than I'm on the cover of Time magazine a lot. They, they're no friends of mine, believe me. And I'm winning by massive margins in many cases. And one was 80 percent to 20 percent. But I'm winning all of these polls. How many were there? Seven or eight or nine? Hundreds of thousands of votes. And then I have to sit back and you have to sit back and hear how those polls don't mean anything. But when they poll 300 people, that means a lot, right? And so we won every single online poll. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands of voters. And then you sit back and you hear how she did so well in the debate. I don't think she did well in the debate at all. I don't think she did well at all. And I just walked in and I saw some of the great people that represent your state. And they said, wow, you did so great in the debate. And we understand it. We understand it. And we'll see as the polls start coming out, the other polls having to do with the states. But I hear we're doing very well. We're leading in Ohio. We're leading in Florida. We're leading in North Carolina. Here we're doing very well. And they are not happy back there, those people back there with the cameras. They are not happy. They are not happy. 
No, they're very dishonest. This will be the year the American people say enough is enough. It's time for real change, a new foreign policy, a new economic policy, a new immigration policy, and a new trade policy. Hillary Clinton, a vessel for special interests, trying to strip this country of its wealth, its jobs, and its status as a sovereign nation. She's a globalist who has made a career of taking jobs from this country and giving them so stupidly and so sadly to other countries. You've been seeing it for years and years and years. It's going to stop. It's no longer going to be a one-lane highway going out of our country with our jobs and our money. It's no longer going to be. I'm not running to be president of the world. I'm running to be president of the United States, and we're going to protect your interests. From now on, it's going to be America first. Have you out there? It's going to be great, right? Are we going to have a good time? And you have a good time when you love what you're doing. I always tell people when they ask me for advice, pick something you love. We love our country. We love what we're doing. It's inconvenient at this time of the day for many of you to be here, but you're here. And we love you. We love you too. Thank you. But we love our country. And that's why we're doing it. You have wondered, why is it that all things the American people want never seem to happen? It never seems to happen. Simple things. We want to create jobs. They go to China. They go all over the place. China makes our product. China cheats us. You know, when we talk free trade, these are stupid people. When we talk free trade, it's supposed to be free trade. So China sends its product in. No tax. Please come in. They dump steel. They hurt our steel workers. They do so many different things. You try selling into China. I have many friends that are manufacturers. It's impossible for them to do business in China. And then sometimes China will say, all right, come build a plant. But they don't even want that. They want their people to build the plant. They don't even want that. It's a one-way street. And you know where the streets are going to lead. You know it. You know the result. I said the other day, I said, we're in a big bubble. The only thing we have going is a phony Wall Street because the interest rates are so low, because the Fed is controlled by the politicians. Never happened before. Why can't we have the schools that we want, and the borders that we want, and the security that we want. Why can't we have policies that support small businesses, or family farms, or the miners and the steel workers? Why can't we? And by the way, for the family farmers, Hillary Clinton's plan proposes an estate tax of 65%, 65%. So you can have a state tax of up to 65%. Lots of luck having your kids hold on to your farms. Not going to happen. The answer is simple, because the financial interests who control our politics and our media don't want these changes to happen. These special interests they control, and they have total control over Hillary Clinton. They give her so much money. Boy, she's got a lot of money. I have had more commercials. I am, I just want to see a regular Ivory Snow commercial. I'm dying. <laughs> she has got so much. And somebody said she's going to out-commercial us. 50 to 1. Now think of it. Is that possible? 50 to 1. Think of it now. She's spending hundreds of millions of dollars. And I think we're leading. I don't know. We're either tied or leading. Right? which tells you how bad she is. Honestly, I truly believe this. Hillary Clinton is incompetent. She's incompetent. I really believe this. You know, I told somebody that they said, no, that's not possible. She failed her bar exam in Washington, D.C. And I said, I'm not that surprised, actually. But I'm telling you, she's incompetent. And she's certainly incompetent for you. That I can tell you. That I know for sure.
She's their chosen representative. You can disregard everything she says. And just remember this phrase, follow the money. She's there for one reason, and that's to protect her donors and special interests. You look at her career. She's been there, and I brought this up the other night at the debate. First time, really? She's been there for 30 years almost, and she's never done anything for you or your family. Now she wants to do this. She wants to fight ISIS. ISIS wouldn't be there if her and Barack Obama ended the war the way it was supposed to be ended and didn't create the big vacuum. And I'd bet if he had it to do over again, knowing what he knows, he would have never picked her as Secretary of State. I bet you. She's failed at everything. She's failed in Iraq. She's failed in Libya. She's failed in Syria. She's failed in Iran. How about the Iran deal? How about that? That was the beginning of that deal. Don't forget, that was her genius that got that one. That's one of the great catastrophes. How about 400 million in cash going to these guys? And then they made a mistake, right? They made a mistake. It wasn't 400. I said, oh, good. Maybe it was like 1 million. No, 1.7 billion. It wasn't 400. It was 1.7 billion in cash. Do you know what that looks like? That would fill up the whole corner of this room up halfway to the ceiling. Cash, cash. And one of the things that Obama or somebody said, well, we couldn't open up normal checking relations, so we had to give it to him cash. Where do these people come from? Where do they come from? She failed on Russia, on China, and on North Korea. She failed in upstate New York. You know, when she ran for the Senate, upstate New York is a, do a, it's a disaster what's happened up there. Our jobs have all flown to Mexico. Our companies have all left, and they've gone, not all, but massive, massive numbers have gone to Mexico and other countries. And when she was running for the Senate, I remember it so much, it sounded so wonderful. We are going to create 200,000 new jobs in upstate New York. Didn't happen. Because once the election was over, she went to Washington. She named a road. She named a post office. She passed three bills. They were nothing bills. Three namings. That's all she did. Did nothing. She did nothing. And what happened in upstate New York is a disaster. You have to see it now. That's why I won in the primaries New York in a massive landslide. In a landslide. Because people are tired of what's going on in our country. And they're tired of what's going on in politics. So I really believe that you take a look. And I said, I think that we're going to have a turnout like you've never seen before. She failed the inner cities. She's failed women and children. I've created thousands of jobs for women in this country, women of incredible talent. Hillary Clinton has been in Washington for many, many years. And now 70 million American, think of this, 70 million American women and children are in poverty or the brink of poverty in our country. This is in the United States of America. And she's been a disaster on the borders. Let them in, let them in. Hillary Clinton supports sanctuary cities, which is basically sanctuary for some very tough people. Where was the sanctuary? for Americans like Sarah Root, the beautiful daughter of Mrs. Root, who you just met. The only people Hillary Clinton has ever really delivered for are her special interests and her donors. Her single greatest achievement may be getting away with her massive email scandal and her criminal cover-up. I think it's her greatest achievement. Our campaign is taking on big business and big media and big donors. We're taking them on for you. We're going to see. Maybe we'll do it and maybe we won't. But if we win, you're going to be so happy and so proud. And you'll have the future for you and your children and your grandchildren that you want 
Because if we don't make that turn now, including the appointment of Supreme Court justices, this country is in big, big trouble. And even Senator Ted Cruz endorsed me the other day, and I know the people of Iowa like Ted Cruz, but he endorsed us the other day, and I thought that was very good. That includes, and we have to include this, we have to keep your families safe. New FBI statistics show that homicide rose 15 percent last year in America's large cities and that it's the largest single-year increase in 45 years. You don't hear this stuff. You only hear it from Trump. But let me tell you, you'll also hear positive for Trump because we're going to turn things around. Somebody said, gee whiz, it's not a very optimistic message. And somebody else said, actually, it's very optimistic because we explain the problem and then we fix it. Like, you have to know the problem. Like Obama and Hillary Clinton, they don't want to say radical Islamic terrorism. I don't want to talk about it. And if you're not going to explain the problem, you're not going to fix it. More than 3,000 people, listen to this, have been shot in Chicago since January. Think of it. It's hard to believe from Iowa, right? 3,000 people have been shot since January, not since like 30 years ago. Since January. 60% of murder victims under the age of 22 in this country are African-American. 45% of African-American children under the age of six are living in poverty. I will never back down from fighting to save American lives. We can't. We can't. I will never back down from fighting to create safety and wealth for our inner cities. My economic agenda can be summed up in three very beautiful words. You know what they are. Jobs, jobs, jobs. We will cut your taxes massively. And by the way, she has a major tax increase. Reduce regulations, including to our farmers. Our farmers are getting absolutely destroyed with regulations. Negotiate great trade deals instead of the horrible deals that we have to live under right now, like NAFTA signed by Bill Clinton. Unleash American energy, and we are going to repeal and replace Obamacare. We're going to protect the renewable fuel standard and corn-based ethanol. We're also going to end Common Core and offer school choice to every disadvantaged child, including every poor Hispanic and African-American child in America. The people getting rich off the rig system are the people throwing their money at Hillary Clinton. Remember, follow the money. Our campaign is about breaking up the special interest monopoly in Washington, D.C. We're trying to disrupt the collusion between the wealthy donors, the large corporations, and the media executives. They're all part of the same political establishment. They go to the same restaurants, they attend the same conferences, they have the same friends and connections, and some of them even like me, I'll be honest with you, but that doesn't matter. And they nod along when Hillary Clinton slanders you as deplorable and as irredeemable. You're irredeemable, they say. No, I don't think so. People don't know how great you are. People don't know how smart you are. These are the smart people. These are the smart people. These are really the smart people. And they never like to say it, but I say it. And I'm a smart person. These are the smart. We have the smartest people. We have the smartest people. And they know it. And some say it, but they hate to say it. But we have the smartest people. Government will start working again. Fixing things is what I do. Just look at my projects in New York and around the world where I revitalized neighborhoods and lifted up skylines. And I don't like to say that, but this is the kind of president we need. It's not that I want to say it. 
an article that appeared recently in the New York Post was called How Donald Trump Helped Save New York City. The article said, quote, Trump waded into a landscape of empty Fifth Avenue storefronts, the Dust Bowl mugging ground that was Central Park, and a Wall Street area seemingly on its last legs as companies moved out of New York City. Trump, almost by will, rode to the rescue. I hate to read this to you. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> Expressing rare faith in the future, he was instrumental in kickstarting the regeneration of neighborhoods and landmarks almost given up for dead. In fact, I had our great mayor, Mayor Giuliani. He knows. Rudy knows. And he did a fantastic job. That's what I want to do for our country. I want to go into the neglected neighborhoods and the great neighborhoods and all neighborhoods. I want to fix the failing schools, the forgotten stretches of this nation. I want to unlock their potential for all of our people. Together, we can accomplish anything we want. But that means you need to show up and vote on November 8th, and it means you need to start voting immediately. Don't forget early voting. You have to knock on doors. You have to pick up that phone. You have to get everybody. If you have somebody that says, I'm sorry, Harold, I can't make it today. I'm so, so sick. I don't think I'll be able to get out of bed. You look at that person, you say, get out of bed. You have no choice. <laughs> you have to campaign on the streets, spread the love that we have in this room to all of the people in your state and in your country to beat the system. Remember, I was the one a long time ago when I was winning states and I wasn't getting delegates. Remember? And I was saying, what's going on? Remember, I went to Louisiana and I wasn't expected to win. The evangelicals were great there, too. And I went down and I said, let's give it one shot. And I gave a speech at a massive airplane hangar. We had unbelievable thousands and thousands of people. And I left. That was on a Friday night. The election was on a Saturday. And I said, this doesn't look like the crowd of a second place or third place finisher. By that time, I think they were down from 17 to about 12 people. And I won big. Saturday night, I won big. And then I'm looking at delegates. And I said, wait a minute. How come I have fewer delegates than people that I beat? And they said, my people. They got so used to it. Well, sir, that's the way the system is. I said, wait a minute. Something wrong with the system. And that's when I said, the system's rigged. And Bernie Sanders had the rigged delegates, and Bernie Sanders had the rigged DNC. The rigged, you remember? Deborah Wasserman Schultz. I don't know how Bernie Sanders can be on the side of Hillary Clinton when the DNC, the Democratic National Committee, run by Hillary Clinton's person, Deborah Wasserman Schultz, what they did to Bernie Sanders was unbelievable. And now she's supporting, he's supporting her. You know what I said? Although I think a lot of the Bernie Sanders people are coming to us because I'm much better on trade than Bernie Sanders even was, and he was okay. But he's supporting her. And you know, Bernie Sanders could have gone down in the record books as being a great, great man. But when he made that deal, it was over. Now he goes and he has crowds of 100 people. Nobody wants to watch him. Nobody wants to listen. Not that they dislike him, but he doesn't draw anybody. He doesn't draw anybody. And it's a whole different thing. Had he not made that deal, he would have been legendary. But once he made that deal, and then she picks a vice president who is sort of the opposite of Bernie Sanders, didn't even pay him the respect. I mean, you know, one of those things. And Cain, when he was governor of Virginia, in the first week, he approved a tax increase of $4 billion in his first week in office. And he wasn't popular in Virginia. They didn't like him in Virginia. He won very close race. And I said to myself, you know, when she picked him, I said, oh, boy, I hope we're not going to lose Virginia now. And we're doing great in Virginia because nobody likes Kane. He approved a $4 billion tax increase in his first week. 
But we do like Mike Pence, that I can tell you. That I can tell you. Triple A rating, Indiana, triple A rating. We're going to have a triple A rated country, too, let me tell you that. We are going to have a country that in so many ways is going to be triple A. We can do it. But Mike has been a fantastic person to work with. To beat the system, you have to lift your voice, pound the pavement. You have to get out and vote. Visit our website if you want to check it out. You have six weeks until the election. Think of it. From June 16th, think of it. Do you believe this? I've been out from June 16th. It's been full time. All the time. You see all the days off that Hillary takes? Day off. Day off. Day off. All those day offs. And then she can't even make it to her car. Isn't it tough? All those day offs. Right? Boom. Do you ever see her chart? She won't be campaigning today. She won't be campaigning today. This is day in, day out. And I'm campaigning. I'm saying, what's going on? Now, in all fairness, she's spending all of that Wall Street money on commercials. Whereas I'm doing it the old-fashioned way, right? We're doing it the old-fashioned. So you have six weeks to make every dream you've ever dreamed for your country come true. You have one magnificent chance, it's your last chance, to deliver justice for every forgotten man, woman, and child in this country. The arrogance of Washington, D.C. will soon come face to face with the righteous verdict of the American voter. On November 8th, we're going to show the whole world that America is back bigger and better and stronger than ever before. Isn't it? Here's just some of what will happen starting in January of 2017. I'm going to lower your taxes. Big League, she is going to raise your taxes. We're going to eliminate every unnecessary regulation. Under her, your regulations are going through the roof. Far more and far worse than you have right now. On top of which, she's putting your mines, your, your steel workers, putting your miners out of business. Repeal and replace Obamacare. We're going to unleash American energy. End illegal immigration. Keep radical Islamic terrorists out of our country. We're going to save the Second Amendment, which is under siege. Support the men and women of law enforcement. Appoint justices to the Supreme Court who will uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States. We will rebuild our roads, bridges, tunnels, highways, airports, schools, hospitals. American cars will travel the roads, American planes will soar the skies, and American ships will patrol the seas. American steel will send new skyscrapers into the clouds. American hands will rebuild our nation, and American energy harvested from American sources will power this nation. American workers will be hired to do the job. We will start making things again. We will put new American steel into the spine of this country. I will fight for every neglected part of this nation, and I will fight to bring us all together as Americans. Imagine what our country could accomplish if we started working together as one people under one God, saluting one American flag. One American flag. It's time to break with the bitter failures of the past and to embrace a new 
inclusive and prosperous American future that we can all be proud of. The world laughs at us, folks. The world laughs at us. Once more, we will have a government of, by, and for the people. We will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong and safe again. We will make America, like it says right on your hat, we will make America great again. Thank you very much. Get out and vote. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you.